Western story roughly goes like this. A long time ago, there was a rich physical and cultural heritage associated with the borough. The next part of the story is a familiar one, particularly familiar to the story that Wadulas have told about Tasmania and other places. They even tell them about the southwest. Once upon a time, white fellas came along and wiped out the people. Wiped out indigenous people, wiped out indigenous culture, wiped out indigenous language. So Nyungan has got no language, got no culture. Got no identity. That's part of that first story. Next part of the narrative around heritage is, well, if that's the case, we need the new high priests to come in and protect the archive to get hold of somehow the heritage and put it in what my friend Tyson Maron, another man, calls sleeping archives. We call those people academics. We call them historians and ar archaeologists and anthropologists. But their job is to get that culture and put fences around it. Sometimes we call them land management rangers. But by and large, the idea of heritage and protection involves getting something that's rare, that's in danger of being extinct, and locking it away. <clears throat> now, for the people involved in Ijaliyala, the local community, when they think of cultural heritage protection or cultural and heritage, how do you think they think? How do you protect culture? Anyone with experience or family? None? You it. You live it. You allow people to live their culture. You share it. You live it. So you allow them to live their culture, you share it. Call me. is done through the doing of story. How do we do that? We tell it. We tell stories where? To whom? We tell it on country. We tell it to our grannies. We tell it to the next generation. We dance it. We sing it. We film it. Heritage isn't about locking something up. Heritage for those senior people is to bring it out, to transmit it. Yeah, please. Um, there, was a, there was a question that was asked of me uh, in Kabul and other places about uh, why did Aboriginal people get a story uh, and not write it down or have a form of maintaining a written process. And um, one, one, one young uh, one young fellow said no, they weren't intelligent enough. And it was, it was a bit it was it was, a, it was interesting. Um, uh, and and the other one, one was um, that they, they told story because story is is relevant to the time that you're in. So if you can imagine over fifty thousand years ago, the story would be quite different to the story that was told two hundred years ago because it was relevant to the time that we're in. If we look at writing something down, it then becomes uh, interpreted by the person in the time that we're in, and then it becomes an, uh, an opportunity for us to debate about what the actual written process was in the area that we're in. But when you have someone telling you a story, you're living in that area, and you understand it because it becomes very fluent, and you can adapt to it. it, 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 it there's not really much of an, uh, of an argument so if we're going to look after our country and our area now, we need to really create a wonderful story about how we as a community. Stories are not stopped at 200 years ago. 
for a hundred and eighty years ago. The story evolves. And our story needs to be redeveloped for us to be able to tell the children. And what is our children? What are we telling our children? What is our story? And, and obviously today, by looking at two sides of the coin, you'll get to see that you know we can develop a wonderful way of connecting our country and, and our stories that have been unheard of. So yeah, I hope that helps. This was a, the, the word heritage is an example, one illustration, and we could use other words like country. For the organisations that were coming in to the Ijaliyawa story with the word heritage, they adopted the first, same word, or it seems to be the same word, but it's not. They adopted the Western idea. Heritage work, heritage engagement involves communities having a say in how their work gets locked up, protected. Ijali Yala were able to listen and, and because they were in the soft landing, but also because they had local interpreters, they understood that that's not what heritage is. Heritage is not just about the old people, it's about the grannies and about the business of transmission. So the, seat, the third hint, perhaps, in our work, perhaps it ought to be the first. That is, how can we even begin to hope to have relationships with, to involve ourselves with, to do this thing called community <coughs> engagement, if there's two different languages being spoken? If we don't know our communities, we don't know the concepts, the words, and to go into some parts of the Western Desert and we're forced, because we can't think we know the words. One of the dangers of the kind of work that, that happens in Perth is that we think that the language that we use is the language of the communities that we're working with. Does that make some sense? almost so elementary, yet how often in our work with young people, in work with seniors, and particularly when we're working um, with communities that don't have easy access to linguistic skills, to language. What did you see? What did you notice? What was going on? Several experts working together. Who are the experts? Uh, everyone. <coughs> Very nice. Yeah. Everyone there was an expert. Now, who was there? Uh, the kids, the illustrator, the, um, um, the other guy, what was his name? Um, the cameraman. Yeah. There were outsiders and insiders. There were Three generations of relatively young men. Three generations. And they were family, they were related to each other. They were family, they were related. They were related through language, language. they were related through skin system, through traditional law and custom. Yeah. I think he said marriage as well, his brother in law. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was actually referring to um, his skin relationship. Oh, okay. Yeah. Someone here said something. What did you notice? Oh, collaboration. Yeah, a lovely interweaving. Yeah, quite humorous, wasn't it? Yeah. At that moment of between Stu and Tyson. So there's not just relationships across the generation, there's relationships across time. Today, 
people working on a project that tells a story about yesterday. And actually, this film piece is a story of cultural transmission. There's this subtle work going on between these three generations that involves the telling of a story. Did you notice that? So young EJ, <coughs> we might call him a novice, he's a young fellow that's hasn't been through law. He's playing the young fellow who hasn't been through law. And his character is being taught, being educated in the law and culture of the place by his father. He's been taught how to hunt and how to record. And that's what's going on between EJ and James and Tyson. As the older man in the relationship, Tyson's giving him instruction. So there's transmission inside the story and there's transmission in the project. Something I really liked was um, how uh, the attention to the detail, um, you know, it'd be easy to assume that a kangaroo is a kangaroo is a kangaroo and him pointing out, well, it's not quite the right kangaroo for this, for yep. this land. Yep. <laughs> That's right. It's really important that for people that have been involved in the creative process, there's lots of detailed work. Anyone here been on country going hunting? You've got to pay attention to the detail. What happens if you don't? Very unsafe business. Very unsafe business. We, we had, um, grew up in Broome and we went out hunting and there was a, a pilgrim fella and a, and a fella from, um, from down here. And we went out and we had rifles. We, I didn't want to go run into a bush with a spear. But um, one of the fellows, he, he wanted to, to shoot one. And uh, he would have maybe five or six shots at a kangaroo. And he missed. And then he, put, he reached over and said, yeah, your, your turn, Sean. And I said, no, no, you're up, uh, give it to Countryman. And he said, why? I said, give it to him, the one shot. It, it's the energy spirit of that country. If you, you're not accepted in proper way, and that is that you do those little details of talking to the country and saying, hey, I'm here. Uh, we want to hunt our, our feed for our family. Uh, we'd like to, for you to bless us with that. And, uh, and, and the old boy, he turned to me and he says, well, you've been around. And I said, oh, cheers, I knew I was going to waste bullets. <laughs> Better give it to the uncle and make sure we got one shot, one kill. Yeah? Uh, but, you know, that's, a, that's something that we, uh, as mob, when you start to work, walk around with your mob, you start to realise, you know what, stick with the ones that know, yeah? Because uh, they're going to be able to guide you and keep you alive. Because we're, we're pretty, pretty fortunate to still have them around. And <coughs> uh, we're still able to produce that. And, and these are not unusual processes. Attention to detail, working across the generations. Also importantly in this case, and these, all the players involved talked about how they had a basic storyboard. <coughs> Tyson had written a story. And they did lots of work in the studio, particularly as they translated this into digital animation. But it was when they went on country that the details came out. The glistening of the spearhead, the muscular action of throwing, all the important work around EJ and James and also Tyson learning happened on country. So another element, another gift if you like from this project to the rest of us is the importance of work across the generations. Not just between two generations. Not just between the grannies and their grandparents, but that middle generation is important. Fast version through another story. <coughs> Part of the process of soft landing with a group of young people, young men and young women, between the ages of 11, 13, 14, um, 
They said, let's do something for fun. What do you want to do for fun? I said, we want to make a film. We want to be stars in a film. And so Stu and the team said, what sort of film? We want blackfellas to be in Mad Max. We want zombies. We want to make a zombie film. Don't have time to show it today, but what emerged was a 15-minute blockbuster starring the Love Punks, a group of young men at that stage, there were 15 of them, who wanted to tell a story of what it's like to live in Rover in 2017. They went through a six-month process of development, workshopping, they got involved in every element of filmmaking, from costume design through storyboarding, sound work, and of course starring. Out of it, each of them created a character, a love punk. And they waged war against the enemies of life, the zombies. Any guesses as to who the zombies were? Adults. <clears throat> now, it was a for fun exercise. The people, their families loved it. They loved it. They memorised it. It got screened everywhere. It was launched after the soft landing of six months. Then the team said, what do you want to do now? They said, we want to play games. We always want to play games. So Stu and the team said, let's make a game. And um, I get smashed on it, so I'm not going to ask someone to come here and have a comp with me. But if you want to try it out, um, I'll, I might show it afterwards when people are sort of nosing away. I'll see if I can smash this, Sean. <laughs> For anyone playing the game, you will choose one of the love punks as your character and you will fight against zombies, against goannas, against frogs. And you'll travel through a reimagined rover, um, smashing goals in a super high basketball court, um, negotiating your way through bombs and scary stuff. <clears throat> All of this was made through the process that you just saw on the screen. Um, building young people's interest, building their action, building their doing stuff, and then introducing them to new technologies, technologies like Photoshop and digital editing, and then game design. Um, the gang tell me that the love punks could probably charge $35 an hour on the international digital animation scene. The third part of the story will come to a little bit later. But that's the how we made the love punks game. What did you see? What did you notice? Kids are really engaged in learning. They were smashing it up. These are kids that, some of them, struggle to concentrate for 10 minutes at school when they're there. Some of those kids spend as many as 12 hours doing that animation work. It takes approximately one hour to go through the process of taking out each frame of those moving parts. And each of those kids did all of the work on each of their characters. That's a lot of attention. That's a lot of time. Never mind. It's a pretty funky, new, cutting-edge technology that these people are learning for the real, the so-called real economy. How did it happen? Because they want to play games. And they're good at it. Anything else you noticed about that? They became the experts. Like they were teaching each other what to do and telling us how you do it. It wasn't done for them. Yeah, they were the experts. It's a lovely, in the earlier stages, they, they produced a a little background doco. And there's this lovely moment where um, I think Maverick is sitting next to Stu and they're in front of the computer. And Stu's walking in through the 12 or so tools, each of which have about 
20 um, elements to them. So he's teaching him this stuff. And he's like, Stu's like a, anyone bought anything from a Mac shop? He's like a Mac salesperson. He never touches the screen. He never touches the equipment. He sits there and says, well, that's the one you do it. When I've had my Mac devices given to me, I have to do all the configuration. And the retail person will sit behind me. A simple yet profoundly powerful tool in engaging with the community. Keep your dirty, rotten hands to yourself. Where there's an opportunity for someone else to do something, there's a lovely scene in that doco where Stu, in one take, he's there with Maverick. And the next tape, Mav says, get out of that chair, I'm going to teach EJ. And then for the rest of the doco, it's just the lads teaching each other. It's something I haven't quite got to this yet, but these new technologies are opening up this capacity for getting people to do things. Do things together, do things alone. With a little, tiny little bit of mentoring, off they go. Anything else you noticed? Some of these things are coming up again and again, aren't they? Colourful, fun, it's interesting. The process itself, and who here likes the idea? Who come in on a Saturday and sit around a boardroom and pull the whiteboard out and chat about a strategic planning exercise? I wouldn't. Actually, I have. That's how sad I am. <laughs> but I can tell you what I prefer. One of the things that the Ijala Yala team do, and I think this is another another takeaway, is that they notice what the community that they're working with has. And there's been, I think, a nice injection over the last 15 years or so by those who talk about assets-based community development or community building. So often we start with the deficits of a community and we miss, we miss young people's interest in gaming. We miss their cultural knowledge. We think, oh, they're only that, why don't know? We miss their everyday, <laughs> their knowledge of the back streets, the front streets, the social connections, the knowledge of who's who. In this case, the Ijaliyala team started with trying to notice the assets, the strengths. We could spend all of our time concentrating on people's deficits. And I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't spend some time. But there's an explosion of activity that comes often out of starting with their strengths. And that little backstory gave you a sense of some of that explosion. The love punks are just going off. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But, um, when I first started going out in the bush and learning about the culture and, and being a part of the, the land, my uncles uh, would be cruising along and they'll go, they'll stop and they'll look at me and they'll go, do you notice it? I'll go, Okay, and then they keep driving. We'll be out in the bush, walking through the bush, and then they go, do you see it? No. <laughs> and then they'll go along again, and then we'll be sitting uh, somewhere, and they go, can you hear it? And I'll go, no. And it was just a constant, do you see it? Do you notice it? Can you feel it? I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not feeling anything. <laughs> I don't understand. All I want to do is get back to my box still. But um, as we were going, then they would, then they would devalge after a few days out there. And I'll go, well, when we were cruising through a certain area there, there were three birds up in the hill. And we told you about three. It's very significant. Remember that? Oh, oh yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to think of where those three birds in my visual but I didn't see them. And then we were um, going through and there was, a, there was a little lizard that was on a little, little branch on the right-hand side where we were standing. On this big hill, and, and my uncle, I remember 
his own in his head. There were so many things that I could have said, a tree, a rock, or whatever. There were so many things I could have said, and I didn't. All I said was, no, I don't see it. Because I was trying to think of what's, what is it that I'm not picking up on, because everything is quite clear. Do you know what I mean? So there was a time there when we were driving out to Northern and, and, and out towards uh, York and that, and we will be driving along and he goes, looks at me and I go, I don't see it. I don't even have to say it. <laughs> and then finally, after so many trips, like I'm talking hundreds of trips, I said, Sandra, what trip? He said, yes. And I cried my eyes out. Because <laughs> I was like, damn, I'm never going to get this, this acknowledgement of what it is that I'm, that I'm missing. What am I missing? And then it was the, the, the uh, Muja trip, the Christmas trip. We're in, we're in woman's country now. And then it was the yellow sand. You see the sand change? Yes. Well, what is the yellow sand? That's old woman's sand. And then there was another one uh, where the rocks changed. And then the birds and the insects and the land just speaks to you. And you stand there and they say to you, you see it? I'm like, yeah, I can see it. But there's something that I'm missing. Can you help me? I'm always, there's always something. We never stop learning. We don't see everything. We've got to acknowledge it. And then they ask me, what do you see? Because I'm miss he's missing what I'm seeing. And this is what a community engagement is, is what we're talking about, connecting. He's asking each other. We've all got visual. We've all got the six senses. Yeah? We've just got to work with each other and connect. Yeah? I, was, I work as a suicide prevention program and in Albany, a member of my co-worker works there. And I've been seeing her for 12 years. I was suicidal and I went through certain stuff and she's been supporting me. And now I work with a wonderful team and I've been working with her who she works closely with for the last four weeks, three, three or four years. I walked out the last um, talk with her we had a, uh, before she went on holiday and I went on holiday. There was an Aboriginal painting up in the hallway. I went, oh great, it was beautiful. Aboriginal painting. Oh, who was that? Who did it? I'm looking for a name and oh, when did they get it? And she looked at me and she says, it's been there for seven years. <laughs> I went, you sure? <laughs> and she said, yes. And she said, it was also in the other room for the four, four years that you've been here where we sit and chat. So for that long, I thought I was connected to indigenous stuff in a lot of ways. But if I can walk past a picture, an Aboriginal painting, seven years without even noticing and I do art. So it was a real big, Sean, there's a lot more to this that I'm not grasping. I just can't wait to, to see those new things that I've been walking past for the last 12 years. I, you know, there's just so many things. Seeing beautiful people, getting to meet wonderful people who are engaged and connected. Walking past our people in the street, not seeing some things that we normally see. But this is connecting, you know, and being able to connect to something, you have to be in tune with it. And then we get the full picture. Does that make sense? Yeah. When I was saying about the shooting, when he shot, the wind changed direction. And in the distance, it was coming this way, but it swirled around and went that way in the distance. He was aiming to the left and missing to the left. Because he thought the wind was coming this way. But when I looked, I seen the tree go that way. And when he shot, old boy, he aimed to the right. Later on, we had a yarn about it. He said, Do you know, huh? I said, Yeah, well, you got over the right there because that wind changed. And it goes this way. And he said, Yeah, he knows it. Even he, you know what I mean? It's those little finer detail things that you don't sometimes pick up. The birds fly. And you see them do that, that movement. And they, change, and they come back into the wind. And then they go down and they come back in. You just follow them. I was watching that in the distance. And then I saw the tree. And I said, You got over the right, not the left, brother. Up because it hasn't. This is um, 
This is part of the EGVR story that hasn't been yet. And what the company likes to do with communities is to use the range of things that that done together over the course of three to five years and put it together at the stage production. Then <coughs> the production hip bone sticking out is going to play this year at the Canberra the Centenary of Canberra Festival. Um, it's a culmination really of the work and a culmination of old stories. It's a culmination of young people's stories, of senior people's stories, of the work that's been happening in Rhode Island Regional Prison. It is literally the act of putting people and their stories from the community on centre stage. This, this, obviously an arts program can do that literally. Other organisations can find other ways of doing that. What I'd like for people to do on their tables is to take a moment away from viewing and I'm going to ask that we get some butcher's paper out. Yes. We're not in a boardroom. And I'd like you to have a discussion about how in your workplace you can find ways to put the communities that you're involved with in the centre stage. The medical is a powerful one. In the case of the Ingeliado program, they can take it more than the medical. They can literally put it into practice. But what I'd like you to do is to start thinking about how you can find ways for the stories, the activities, the interests, the achievements, the capacities of the community you're all working with and put them centre stage. stories that we've been exploring and think about in your own workplaces how you might be able to take the communities that you're working with and I'll use the metaphor take the communities that you're working with and put them centre stage okay? Ijiliyala will literally it literally does that through its theatre, its film, its music puts them on the national stage for you, most of you won't be able to do that, but you will find ways of being able to celebrate publicly and assist in getting the stories out about the communities that you're keen to engage in. So, to maybe if you frame it in this way, in your workplaces, how can we help bring out the stories of the communities we're working with? Does that make sense? 
Have a discussion and make some notes.
relating to system. I haven't seen any sites on us that I can use. There's compromise on some that I wanted to. So we're all on the line. 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 We're all on the line.
that everything you've seen today as a part of this story shows the people of Roeburn as vibrant, living, talented, capable people using the latest of mediums, using the finest quality artists, drawing out the high calibre of people from Roeburn. So often, sadly, we don't get to do that. We don't have the resources, we don't have the time, we don't think to. Too many of us are a little self-effacing. But we represent, in our work with communities, an important opportunity, or, or what stands in front of us is an important opportunity, to not just do it after the fact, but to build into our relationships, celebration. And many of us Westerners think that ritual is something we do on weekends. But we pretend that celebration is something we do around alcohol only, birthdays or weddings. Building it into our professional practice is a serious business. Whether you're thinking about doing it. You get jealous for those boys. Serious players. They even gave they gave Julia a love punk's name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Something like you know, the, the red hero or I forgot what it was, but it's really positive. I sh I should chase that up actually. It's a good part of the story. theme that's been drawn out a number of times during today's discussion and, and it comes out of the story. Um, I'm going to, yeah, the last, <coughs> probably the, one of the, if not the last, one of the last um, video clips that I'm going to show you is the stage that we're up to now with uh, Love Punks. Um, at the end of, after the launch of the game, the next question was, what next? What now? And um, they got confident enough to say, we want to make an iPad app. Um, I don't know if anyone, has anyone seen it? It's called Neomags. Um, $2.99 will get you the first two episodes and, it, and the next time there's an episode that gets, comes up, there'll just be a free upload. Um, I've got the first on my iPad here if anyone wants to play with it over lunch. But it's taking the story of the love punks, the story of their grandparents, the story of yesterday and putting it into 2070 in the form of a digital animation. A digital animation that kids can point to, look at, slide, listen to, press speech bubbles, uh, learn to read. And it's all made by young people. Making and doing stuff. A very grown up way of framing the concept, is it? What do we, what do we use? What sort of language do we use in our, in our grown up professional life? Project management? Design and implement. Design and implement? Engage. Engage. Creation. Develop, review, and evaluate. Particularly poetic. It's got a little poetic. No, it has not. <laughs> um, making and doing stuff. It's amazing what happens with your relationship with another person if you make something with them or you do something with them. The big end of town does it all the time. They know how to play golf and do the deal. They know how to go fishing and do the deal. Let's have a look. We made this comic. Who got an iPad? Who downloaded it on the iPad app store? Thank <laughs> you. 
Simplest is they made something that you that you can see. It's a Neo Man's story on an iPad app. Second is they have taken pressure <laughs> from not quite, not quite. being <laughs> that past generation and they've started to make it accessible for her to use this new technology. Um, some powerful some powerful apps happened. Anyone uh, involved in um, working with people with intellectual disabilities and, and explore iPads use. Fantastic technology, fantastic technology. The, <clears throat> the clever thing about this story is it's layering. It layers, um, it involves cultural transmission right now. The community that these kids are getting involved in Global. They're taking their grandparents' story. They're putting it in the iPad app store. Two dollars ninety-nine anywhere around the world. People are getting the old story and the new story from Rover. Through this process, you just participated in one of the most ancient experiences of cultural heritage transmission. You're brought into a relationship with people across the generations. You're coming into that relationship in a really soft and easy way, a pleasurable way, a way that makes you go, wow. You're being introduced to a really positive story. A really positive element of the that you previously thought of as dysfunctional. And who are the architects of this community engagement? The love fund. 11, 12, 13 year old indigenous young people. According to our popular wisdom, the Possibly the country's most single group of difficult clients or communities. Our greatest public policy challenge. A 
And you've just been given that by them. As well as that, then maybe you've been given some gifts about how you can take some of these ideas. Ideas that obviously are being well resourced. Obviously represent a dynamic set of projects. Obviously are not where you are. For many of you, working with different kind of communities. But I think you're being given gifts about themes, ways of doing community engagement that translate, or can translate, into your workplaces. <coughs> us to end is if, if we could recall it so that I can sing back to the love poems. I haven't actually asked you this question. This film, film work, is that being recorded for, for you guys? So through the magic of this technology, um, we can maybe take a few grabs and give it back to the people of Italy Island Project as a way of showing them what they've gifted to us. Okay, we can do that, great. What I'd like you to do for my invitation is that one person from each of, of um, your tables does um, one main piece of reflection. Or if they speak to the notes that you've made, how can you take these ideas and put them into practice in your workplace? How can you take these gifts given you Give it to you by Italiala and make value of it. Um, and the second thing that I'd ask you to reflect on and just say, and anyone can do this, is to say, um, to give a message to the Italiala um, families. A message of thanks, a message of joy, a message of something. Yeah? So two things. Somebody from each group to stand up and say, this is what, this is how we think in our workplaces and anyone to stand up in front of the camera and say what you want to the people that usually go about the project. Yeah? So we've got someone that's prepared to start us off. Somebody will volunteer at somebody else from their group. <laughs> if you can start to just you nominate someone and file down the front so the camera can actually see. Remember, this is a message to the Idula Yala gang, both about how their work is going to change our lives and also the other message.
two questions that you can turn to. So what for our organisations? That can be one thing. And the other is any message to EGLER. Good on you. Um, I think we're all pretty fat all from pretty different backgrounds at our table, so we have a few different ideas. Um, we've got someone working with children, and she thinks that dance and music and art is a good way to engage with that group. Um, so I agree with that. Um, we've got a few from the flying doctors, um, and the community that they work with is the entire state, as, um, as they said, and what they want to do is to profile communities or individuals that have benefited from their programs to the, to the wider state. <laughs> um, for my organisation, what I think we need to do is um, just to put the community and the decision makers in the same room at the same time, because that's something that doesn't happen very often, and I think that we're a pretty big barrier. Um, and another point we made was that um, communication needs to be too way um, too often we have one way communication. Is that a volunteer?
they had skills and experience and knowledge that everybody else coming to that table didn't have and couldn't have because of their situation and their youth and their enthusiasm. Um, but that you could complement that and you could and really spend the time to pull that um, out of them and, and to give them experiences but also learn from them along the way. So I think that's and what inspiration to the Yijayala kids, um, very inspirational. I suppose it goes down to um, the getting on the grassroots level with, um, with the community. Uh, that's one of the main things that we um, agreed on. And also to have people tell their personal stories and experiences to get feedback. And um, this is what these kids have done. and. Um, and they've been listened to as well, and it's been in collaboration, and um, it's a wonderful thing to be today. So, thank you, Daily Mom. <laughs> is um, to convince whoever's relevant like for a certain project or whatever in the workplace or organisation to do things differently and to do that we really need to tap into their agendas um, to get their buy-in because obviously we'd need like sign off if we have these great ideas and so on so I think that's what we'd need to do in our organisations. Um, we also spoke about things that were mentioned about you know taking a bottom-up approach um, and yeah, it's just really great to see some of the Ijali Yala, um, just some of the projects that were done, some of the successes they've had for the, the community um, with learning and yeah, empowerment and so on. And then also how that contributes to the wider community, like there's the app and things going international and just con yeah, contributing to the wider community as well. It's really great. We kind of have some really creative um, people in our group and they've got some fantastic projects that are already happening and then we've got the more traditional ways of sharing information. Um, so we've got uh, a range of ideas from children's concerts, community calendars, um, projecting um, community leader portraits on buildings, interactive community arts, uh, storybooks, and yet yeah, traditional case studies, that kind of thing. So kind of the big range of things. Um, I guess personally what I enjoyed about today was kind of taking the key principles um, of you know, community development and engagement. So, you know, from the one to eight that we've kind of heard, but um, the community of the young people really brought it to life and really helped us understand, you know, how it does really make a difference. Um, that was just my personal reflection and thank you to the young people. Thanks. <laughs> Do we have any individuals who might have a, a, a final word for um, particularly targeting the, the participants, the community and the, the workers involved in the Ijuliara project? Can I just a personal comment? Yeah. Um, I would have liked to have seen the young people who did this fantastic work come down here and act out and show us and demonstrate and actually be part of the scene because to me I think it's kind of second hand and I don't think, this is a philosophical question, I don't think I can have a relationship with an app on a technology. It's face to face, person to person and I think we've really relied too much on that. Well, we lose the ability to communicate as people. Yeah. If 
they came down here, those love, love punks would be here, they'd have you on an app, quick smart. <laughs> 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 they were charged and showcased there with their yeah. skills and everything else. Yeah. Any other messages? Carol. I just want to say thanks kids and you're really brave and you're deadly and thanks very much for your amazing creativity. And I do hope you do come to Perth one day and uh, show us how it's done. I should have said they've been here. They've been here a couple of times. Come again. Uh, next year's Supernova. Next year's uh, Perth Festival, fingers crossed. And I'll let you know if, they, if we get them down between then and there. Now. Um, um, you've got a... Um, yes. The, 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 the work that we do in a community is often not looking and acknowledging what people are doing out there and they give us so-called permission to, to connect and share. When someone starts to cry in a room, it gives sometimes us a, a, a chance to connect with that person and have the permission, so to speak, to cry with them. And uh, I think that what you fellows have been doing up there, you young fellows, you've given us permission to think outside the box. You've given us the permission to, to respect you and acknowledge you for the things that you're able to create and, and drive for. You give us permission to, to, to see hope. Uh, uh, you give us permission to, to share with our, our young kids down here um, and all over. So it's, it's beautiful to see all the colours and, and you fellas driving, you know, that we're here and, and we see you. We all see you. And, and, and we're going to hear you a lot more. And I think that in time, uh, we as, as, as community leaders and community workers, are going to be running around with a lot of colour on us. So good on you, fellas. And we're, we're, we're going to be right behind you. Too. I think it's um, the time of the day when we need to do the front and centre work. Um, you can't do, can't even talk about community engagement without a feed. Um, thank you personally, thank you very much for the invitation to come and present other people's stories. Um, thanks for the introductions and the welcomes, and um, I hope that some of those stories you can take with you. It sounds like you already are. So um, thanks very much, and uh, look forward to seeing you down the track.
Oh, sorry. Sorry, mate. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Oh. 